Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Danielle Gaudet, and welcome to another Conscious Conversation on Earth Management TV. If you are here, feel free to say hello in the chat anytime, or you can respond to anything I'm talking about. Let me know if it resonates with you or if you have any questions about it. So today's topic is compassionate self-awareness. And in many ways, I've been talking about this already in our talks. Um, for those of you who've been joining me or listening in, I talked a lot about bringing our conscious awareness from the outside to the inside. So it's, this, it's the same kind of thing here, looking inward, right? It's activating our self-awareness. Self-awareness is about introspection. Actually, I looked up the meaning on Google just to be really clear about what we're talking about because maybe different people are talking about different things. And it talked about the meaning of self-awareness is conscious. So I think this is an important word, conscious knowledge of one's own character, feelings, motives, and desires. So that's all about my own inner world, right? All of those things that's listed there, character, feelings, motives, desires. We can add, you know, thoughts and expectations and beliefs. There's so many things we could even additionally add to that list. It's all the makeup of one's own inner world. So self-awareness is bringing my mind from out to in this inner reflection time to become aware of what's going on in my inner world. And this is really important and necessary when it comes to healing conflict of any kind. So that can be a healing conflict or an, an unharmonious relationship with myself, even just to start. And then, of course, from there, healing conflict or disharmony in relationships with others or on a more world scale. And I think it's critical, a critical part of what humans need in healing the conflict and disharmony that we're experiencing with the planet, with each other which is causing the problem with the planet. First, we need self-awareness. That's why I spoke of that. I think it was maybe even my first com conscious conversation where I started talking about human management is how we have to come turn our consciousness from outside to inside. So it's right there in the definition, right? Conscious awareness of my inside, bringing consciousness in. Mandatory for healing these conflicts. And it also has other really important, uh, it's really important as part of the collective as well, like the collective energy pool that we're all living in with human beings, the collective consciousness. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. Good morning, Patricia. Welcome. So nice to see you here. So this is the meaning of self-awareness, and this is why we need it. When we look inward, we stop blaming others, which is what I talked about before. And we also become more clear about ourselves. And then we can find maybe um, different choices that we want to make, that we need to make in order to create more healing in our lives. Again, that's with ourselves or in our relationships with others or in different parts of our lives. But why is that hard? I think that's that really needs to be addressed here because if it was easy, everyone would just do it simply and we would probably have a better world in a very short amount of time. But it's not something that I would say um, the majority of people are doing. I mean, there's a lot of humans on the planet and I. I don't think we're at any kind of majority of people being self-aware. People tend to look outward. So why is it hard? Why is it so hard? I believe through my own practice and teaching many students over the last 20 years, 
when we look inward and we feel these things like our feelings and our desires and we become aware of maybe character, so-called flaws or different kind of underlying beliefs that are controlling us, it's very, very painful sometimes. Because, and, and there's a reason for that too, right? Because we judge it as bad. We don't want to see the so-called bad things about ourselves. We don't want to see these negative emotions that we carry. Wow, I have a lot of anger inside. I don't want to see that. I don't want to feel that. I don't want to feel all my sadness. I don't want to feel my fear. It's going to make me more afraid. It's going to make me more sad. It's going to make me more angry, right? Or we see things about ourselves that we weren't aware of before, and we can feel shame about that and so we don't like we don't like it because we keep judging it as bad or wrong this is where we stumble with self-awareness because once we sense those things and if our ju judgment our judger inner judge turns on and we're like oh that's bad I don't want to feel that oh it's not good that I have that inside of me that's a really ugly part of me let's say we judge ourselves, then we just bounce out because it's so uncomfortable. I don't want to feel that anymore. I don't want to see that. So I just bounce out. It's very easy to bounce out. Just focus outside. Focus on that person. Focus on, you know, social media, entertainment. People have all kinds of addictions and crutches. Could even just be, you know, food. Let's go kind of in the entertainment field, let's go entertain myself some way, make myself feel good some way, which isn't bad when it comes to the topic of like self-love and self-soothing and self-care. We need the ability to make ourselves feel good. But this is why self-awareness is so important, right? I have to see myself very clearly. Am I doing self-love and self-care or am I doing avoidance? Am I doing like Re rejecting or resisting to be aware of myself because it hurts in some way. It's uncomfortable in some way. So this is why we need compassionate self-awareness, right? The topic for today. Putting down that judgmental mind and really reframing our entire relationship with those, with that inner world that I listed I said, you know, character, feelings, motivations, uh, desires. And I also included, we can say thoughts, we can say beliefs, expectations, so many things. Putting down any kind of judgment at all about any of it. Hi, Amy. Good morning. Welcome. This is not easy, I know. But something we have to kind of develop the ability to do. We have to sort of strengthen the, the sense, it's a sense of what I call, what, what we talk about in brain education and what I teach a lot in my self-mastery courses is this concept of watching. So inner watching, inner observation, which can also be called non-judgmental observation. Again, easier said than done, but as is all the things, like all the things I'm talking about here on these lives, they're a sense that we need to develop, just like a muscle that we need to strengthen. Everyone has the ability to do it. It just might be a little more dormant inside of some of us or like a muscle that's unused. Hi, Julie. Welcome. So good to see you all. So we really need the power of non-judgmental observation or inner watching in order to have compassionate self-awareness. And again, it takes time to train that sense, but the starting point, the starting point of it all is shifting our perspective on our relationship with these these inner traits that I've listed several times now, they usually we feel like they mean so much about me. We make their meaning really big. 
and we feel like they define my value in some way. Oh, I have this emotion. I'm a bad person. Oh my God, I saw this about my character. It's terrible. I, I shouldn't be, I shouldn't have this kind of selfish mind. Oh, now I'm guilty. And we keep reacting because we make it mean something really big about us, about my worth and my value. This means I'm not a good person. This means I'm not a loving person. This means something fundamentally so-called bad about me. So if you observe yourself very closely, you can see yourself doing this on a really subtle level sometimes. sometimes so for some of us, it's right there on the forefront where it's loud. We can hear our inner judge and it's super loud and usually we suffer worse because of that. But for others, and even I want to say when you have the harsh inner judge, there's more subtle things we need to become aware of to realize how much I was making that mean something that it doesn't really mean. And I was considering that as my worth and my value, but it doesn't mean that at all. I can see a comment. I have a friend that once told me that self-awareness is about doing self-analysis. Do you think they're the same or similar? Thank you for your question, Patricia. Okay, self-analysis. So I would consider self-analysis because the word analyzing is in there. So self-analysis happens a lot more on a, a mental, intellectual level, which isn't bad. This is also a form of self-awareness. But it's it's a me mental. So why did I just do that? Let me think about it. Let me analyze it. Let me take it apart. I understand. That can be, that's, that's better than no self-awareness at all. So that is some degree of self-awareness. But another thing, another aspect of our kind of mental function is judging and criticizing. So analyzing, judging, criticizing, this all comes when we are up in our head, so to speak, when we're being intellectual and sort of mentally examining something. So that's a danger, right? Analyzing is fine if it's non-judgmental, but quickly criticism and judgment gets mixed in there. And now I'm not just analyzing without judgment, I'm criticizing and judging maybe myself and maybe others. It's hard to get out of that space when we're up in our intellect. Does that make sense, Patricia? So the kind of self-awareness that I'm talking about is more coming in into the feeling and being able to drop into to my feeling with without judgment, with just a sense of a more neutral sense. This is a good word, like neutralizing. Oh, I have this feeling, but it's okay. It's just a feeling. I have this character, aspect of my character. It's okay. It's just an aspect of my character. Like we, real watching helps us to have deeper and deeper self-awareness and not just get stuck at the intellectual level, but go deeper and deeper. We need this real watching ability, making some separation from it. Like it doesn't have anything to do. It's not about me. It's just a feeling that flows through me, that lives inside of me. Oh, it's just a feeling connected to beliefs I've maybe lived with all my life. It's okay. We need to learn to be more compassionate about those things, like the things that we become aware of inside. When we do that, we can go deeper and deeper. We can recognize ourselves at very deep levels. And then we know, we know what we need. We know what we want. We know what we need to ask for. We know when we need to say, I'm sorry. We know when we need to say, thank you. We know what kind of choices and actions we want to take because we become aware of ourselves at a very deep level. So we need to bypass those places that we would typically get stuck on, like, we just judge them and bounce out or just judge them and then go hide in another place in my mind, right? Like just thinking some other kind of thought, maybe creating some other story about it in my mind. All of it is sort of, all of that are like attempts to move away from myself. 
But when we can just be present with our feeling, with our awareness, with whatever we see, and practice to remove my judgment. Like if this is judging, like release my grip. Remove my judgment just for a moment. Try to breathe. Try to relax. Try to give myself compassion. So giving myself compassionate understanding is really different than avo avoiding mechanisms to just feel good and get away from pain. It's more just being aware that, yeah, I have all of these things and it's okay because I'm human and this is part of the human journey. And it's it's not my true self at all. So this helps us calm way down, neutralize, and then make better choices, whatever they might be, as I just listed. They might be better choices for knowing how to ask for what I need or for how to share with somebody something very important that could help us maybe solve a conflict or choices that I want to make in life when I'm not judging so harshly or looking outward when I'm really aware of myself. Does this make sense, everyone? Okay, Patricia said 100% understand. I'm really glad to hear that. And another reason why this is so important and like why this is kind of um, an important thing to talk about here at Earth Management TV is because we're often talking about consciousness and the collective consciousness and how the energy, you know, what our inner world is like. We're, from an energetic standpoint, putting that vibration out into the world. So if our inner world is more calm and peaceful, we're putting that vibration out into the world. But if in our inner world, we're fighting a lot, we're fighting with ourselves even, we're judging ourselves, we're in, we're in a battle inside and then we're like, oh, why is there so much war in the world? So we're in a bat. we all are having battles inside. It, inner world creates outer world. This is a principle of energy. So there's a lot of humans on the planet. So the outer world shows what's going on inside of the human being's inner world. So we want to practice as people who care about the earth, people who care about earth management, making a better world. We want to change. We want to change this, at least starting within myself. So we want to neutralize my inner world. Because if I'm full of emotional energy and expressing that emotional energy, then that energy goes out as ripples into the world. And then now there's like angry vibrations or fearful vibrations going out into the collective consciousness. And then conversely, if I then try to suppress my emotions because I don't want to do that, which is what happens to a lot of people who want to be good people and kind people. So they don't want to express because they don't want to hurt anybody or anything. So then we end up suppressing. But that also, that like creates a lot of hurt for me. And now I'm just accumulating the, this toxic energy inside of me. And another principle of energy is that energy, energy has to flow in some way. It's either going to flow as in a healthy way or an unhealthy way. So we cannot keep that energy contained inside. This is my point. So eventually all that suppressed energy will ultimately leak out in ways that we probably don't want it to, that we don't mean it to. Other people can sense it. It's still adding to the collective consciousness. The, bet, the only choice is the, the third choice. So not expressing, suppressing. These are not of the ideal choices for healing. So what we want to move to is this third way, which is this watching, neutralizing through watching and accepting. When we can watch and accept, and I will be talking about acceptance more here. I work on acceptance a lot in my self-mastery classes, my emotional self-mastery classes. Acceptance is very important, but it, we need this non-judgmental watching in order to accept. When we do that, we neutralize our inside. It's like we cleaned up that kind of messy energy 
And now it's neutral and we can share a more calm or positive energy. So I want to, I see comments, I'm going to read them in a minute, but I just want to say quickly that I want to be careful when I share all of this. Like, I don't want anyone to be like, oh no, I was emotional and I contributed that to the world. It's terrible. I don't want anyone listening to this to be more hard on yourself. I am a highly sensitive, highly emotional person, which is why I've done so much of this emotional self-mastery work to understand how to go into my inner world and learn how to watch and accept. Just remember, it's a process. It's a journey. And just the fact that you're working on it, each day is a new opportunity to work on it again or at deeper and deeper levels. Just encourage yourself in that way. That you're that you're on the journey and praise yourself that you're taking the brave effort of looking inside and introspecting and you want to be self-aware and you want to learn how to watch and accept and not be as you know emotionally charged and putting that vibration out like you're practicing with it that alone is amazing and we just need more and more people like what you're all doing, what we're all trying to do. So Amy's comment, when I go deeper into the pain, discomfort, and really feeling it, I can heal it. And really feeling I can heal it. Sitting in the discomfort is hard, but I think it leads to healing. I do get stuck in judgment though. Okay, so Amy, you're saying that when you practice to sit in your painful and uncomfortable feelings, you can start to get a sense that it's possible to heal them. I think this is what you're saying, but you're also saying that you can see that sometimes you do get stuck in the judgment part. Yes. Yes. The judgment part is tricky and sneaky. And actually, we're all very mental and intellectual for the most part, you know, in our culture. That's that's what how we're trained and educated. So our our judgment is activated. And when you're very sensitive, as I shared at the beginning, you can even feel that it sounds even louder, like your inner judge is even louder. So if you do get stuck in judgment a lot, just keep working with your judgment. Like, oh, this is just judgment. Keep recognizing this is just judgment. It's not the truth. I don't need to listen to that voice. I don't need to follow that. I'm going to breathe out. I'm going to relax. I'm going to try to release from that judging and meaning making right? Meaning making. I'm going to try to take my hands off that for a minute and just breathe. Like, all of this is okay. This is a very normal part of being human. I'm just going to let it flow. This is a simple way to practice with judgment. Patricia, so I should acknowledge my emotions and not just, yes, acknowledging, acknowledging, feeling them, allowing them. Again, I, go much deeper into this in emotional self-mastery. Some of you experience it in the webinar. It's the practice to be with the feeling and breathe with the feeling. Because the truth about feelings are, they're like clouds. They come, they go. They're like mist. They're not concrete. They're not forever. They're absolutely not the truth of us. They're just a phenomena of being alive. And some of us have been, you know, stuffing a lot of them for a long time. So they just, we just feel them coming up all the time, but we just have to keep remembering it's just clouds. It's just like a fog inside of me, like a layer of fog moving through me. If I cannot judge that and just breathe and be compassionate with myself, we're releasing that energy. We're allowing that energy to move through us and out of us. Don't worry, people will make you work on it daily. (laughs) Patricia said that's right. Life will make us work on it daily. So we we don't have to worry about deepening our practice. Every single day is an opportunity for practicing this. But that's the joy of it. So we have to shift our relationship with our inner world and see it as opportunity, great opportunity for practice and healing and growth and strengthening our watching muscle and strengthening our compassionate self-awareness, senses. And when we see it that way, we feel then we naturally feel less angry with the world and we naturally feel less blaming of everything because we enjoy the practice. 
Yes, Amy, you're welcome for the recommendation. It's always good. We need, as we practice, we need lots of reminders because as we practice, sometimes we stumble. Like, how am I supposed to not judge this? Or we, we have new experiences we're confronted with. So we need to just remember again and again. We have all of, you know, so many things available to you to remember again and again. This is an ongoing process. What is the right way to spell judgment? Both? Oh, this is a very good question. Actually, I'm not 100% sure. I kind of wondered about that myself. Um, I think I think you can spell it either way, but I think you should check with Google for that. I usually, I think I usually put it with the E inside, but I'd have to double check it myself too. Thanks for the question, Amy. Yes, daily practice makes progress. Okay, Earth Management TV is helping us here with our spelling. <laughs> she said it's the second one. Okay, thank you. So this is the topic of compassion and self-awareness. So it's it's that important. It's important for so many levels. So we can look at a big global scale, the energy we're putting out there. But we want to neutralize it. But also just on a pers very personal scale in our daily relationships, you know, reducing conflict, increasing harmony requires self-awareness. And then maybe even most importantly is our relationship with ourselves having a more healthy, peaceful, harmonious relationship with myself requires self-awareness, but it must be compassion and self-awareness, not with a lot of judgment and criticism. And that's the real work. And when we do that, we're naturally doing for the collective as well. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope that's helpful for everyone. I am teaching an eight-week course, Emotional Self-Mastery. I offer that as an online program. So I think that there'll be information below. I'll start to kind of share about that. I haven't really been sharing about it until now, but I've been teaching it for over a decade to sort of help people work on these layers very, very closely with a lot of coaching. Because again, we're, we're much more familiar with the outer world than we are the inner world. So it requires a lot of practice. And as I continue these conscious conversations, I will be sharing more and more aspects of all of this. So Julie, useful reminder of watching. Yes, we all need the reminder. Me too, every day. So as soon as you identify yourself as judging, remember, Oh, I'm judging. I'm in my head. I'm in analyzing. I'm not in compassionate self-awareness. How can I play, place, just place that judgment for a moment and just breathe and be more kind to myself? Feelings are just feelings. They don't mean this huge mountain of meaning that I've made out of it. They don't mean anything about my true worth and value. I am a living, breathing thing. I'm valuable in and of myself. All my inner world thoughts, feelings, character, desires, they can never be my true self. I am a living, breathing part of nature. That alone makes me valuable and worthy and deserving of compassion. So please remember that as you work with your, with your inner feelings, as you do introspection and go within and become more self-aware. Please remember compassion and love and forgiveness and kindness to yourself. Okay, I'm so glad it was helpful for you, Patricia. I will finish here and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Okay, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.